Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Black Ops 2 In-Depth. In today's episode, I'm going to be reviewing the MTAR Assault Rifle. I should tell you that the MTAR is not an assault rifle that you should underestimate just because it's a default weapon. In Black Ops 2, the default weapons are all excellent, and the MTAR is no exception to this rule. This is a very dangerous weapon to, for you to use and to be used against you. Without wasting any more of your time, let's talk about the damage on the MTAR. It'll deal 40 damage in close quarters combat, and it'll drop off to 24 damage at a distance. There has been some confusion and previous in-depth episodes as to what this means and I, I'll clarify again for the new subscribers. Guns in Call of Duty are programmed to where they do less damage the further they are away from the person that's shooting them. So if you're shooting up somebody up close, uh, they'll, it'll deal more damage than if you're hitting somebody really far across the map. And when I say drop off, I'm not talking about the bullets falling, I'm talking about the damage decreasing or dropping off of a slope because that's how these guns kind of work. It's a little bit different in this game, but think of it like a, line, like a linear slope, like the things you do in Algebra 2. Anyway, it'll deal 40 up close, 24 at a distance, and that makes it a 3 to 5 shot kill assault rifle, just kind of depending on how far away you are from the enemy. It's one of a handful of 3 shot kill assault rifles, and I think that makes it very dangerous. It does have an intermediate damage of 30 between 16 and 38 meters. So that 40 damage would be from 0 to about, you know, 15.9 meters, and then from 16 to 38, it'll deal 30 damage, and then beyond 38 meters, it's going to drop off to that lowly 24 damage, which you really kind of want to avoid. This is what I would call a medium range assault rifle. This damage curve is very normal for assault rifles, nothing particularly special about it. If you use a silencer in conjunction with this weapon, it's going to decrease that by 30%, so you're just knocking 30% off that 16, 30% off that 38, and scooting the whole curve back. Not such a bad penalty compared to other Call of Duty games, but I generally kind of avoid the silencer. This assault rifle does have a headshot multiplier of 1.2x, that's 120% damage or 20% bonus damage every single time you shoot somebody in the head. This isn't going to help you at close range because 1.2 times 40 is just 48. However, at medium range and long range with the 30 damage and the 24 damage, it's going to increase it to where it's going to take one less shot to kill, so headshots are useful at everything but close range. It's not going to help you in close range, but headshots are good at just about everything else. I'm adding a new section to in-depth for hardcore players. In hardcore, you only have 30 health, so the Empire will one-shot kill up to 38 meters, which is quite effective. The rate of fire on this assault rifle is pretty average for the assault rifle class. It shoots at 720 RPM in fully automatic mode. This best compares to the M27, which shoots at the same speed. The PDW and the MSMC, they all shoot at this exact same speed. And I'm going to compare the two a lot because the MSMC and PDW, because they have the same damage and the same speed in close quarters combat, at least they will kill in the exact same amount of time. The MTAR has a low to medium recoil profile. It's not exactly a low recoil weapon. It's not quite a high or medium recoil weapon. It's somewhere in between the two. Very effective if you shoot in four to five shot bursts, though then again, most assault rifles are. You can spray with it a little bit, though spraying with it at long ranges isn't particularly effective. If you use select fire on this weapon, it still shoots at 720 RPM, three shot burst, more or less no delay, and of course it's markedly more accurate, but I don't feel that it's a very strong weapon for select fire and I generally don't use it that way. This weapon has a numerically statistically average hip fire. The size of the hip fire box is the same as the rest of most of the other assault rifles. Not as good as the submachine guns, not as bad as the light machine guns, just very average hip fire. However, since it's a three shot kill assault rifle, its effective hip fire is a little bit better. It shoots a little bit slow, but you can hip fire this weapon. You can hose people down and kill them just because it's a three shot kill, but that's still really not the ideal way to be using it. Time to kill is average. While this may be good in some respects, it is the bearer of standards of average for the assault rifle class when it comes to time to kill. Very average time to kill up close, average time to kill medium range, average time to kill a long distance. Just pretty average in the time to kill category. The iron sights are okay-ish. I kind of like them, I kind of don't like them, it just kind of depends on the class I'm building. If I'm building more of a close quarters, rough and tumble class, I'll use the iron sights. If I'm building a class that I expect to use a little bit further away, I'm going to be looking for some optics of some kind. On this weapon, I prefer the red dot sight above the other optics just because it's not that long range of a weapon. It doesn't really need ACOG, it doesn't work well with target finder, but the red dot sight worked quite well for me, though the irons also aren't bad. And just a little bit too obstructive for anything outside of medium range. 
It's got a perfectly average aim down sight time for assault rifles, a quarter second in and a quarter second out. The reload time is kind of crazy. The, the numerical times are pretty close to average, but the animation time is almost two and a half seconds. That's two and a half seconds to watch your guy fiddle with his magazine and stick it in the gun. However, the reload cancel time is 1.32 seconds. So if you reload cancel, you'll save yourself a whole second of reloading, and it's almost twice as fast. I highly recommend reload canceling. To reload cancel, uh, I think you can still tap YY, but I usually just sprint as soon as I see the bullets load into the magazine and that reload cancels. I would always recommend reload canceling with this weapon it'll save you a lot of time magazine pretty normal for assault rifles 30 and 40 with extended mags uh, the next episode is actually going to be an extended mags because that slows down your reload time but that's neither here nor there and when it comes to my recommendation on what kind of assault rifle this is, how you should use it, I say that this is an all-purpose rough-and-tumble kind of assault rifle. It's very difficult to use this weapon incorrectly. It's good in almost all situations. It's not the best in really any situation, but it's good in almost all situations. It's a weapon with very few weaknesses, though its strengths are mitigated by the fact that it has no specialty. And I don't mean that in a negative way. It's a durable, all-purpose assault rifle that you can use on any class in any situation, and it's good for that. Just don't use it as a specialty weapon because it's not one. And you should also not underestimate this weapon just because it's a default weapon. It's one of the few assault rifles that are fully automatic that have a three-shot kill range, relatively accurate, good reload, relatively good recoil. It's a very good starter weapon. A lot of Call of Duty games don't have very good starter assault rifles. This one is excellent. And when it comes to recommended classes, I've built two of them. The one that I would recommend the most is kind of the one I'm, I make for a lot of assault rifles because I like being fast and it works particularly well on the MTAR. I rock it with a quick draw handle, the stock, and a red dot sight because the iron sights aren't quite up to par. However, if you do like the iron sights, you could trade out the red dot sight for the laser sight and that would help a lot with the hip fire. The perks aren't really important because a lot of people, it's a very general assault rifle. You can build any kind of class you want with those are the ones I like the best. However, there's an alternative that's also quite fun. I have used it with no attachments and lots of perks and equipment and all that other sort of stuff because it works fairly well just stock with no attachments whatsoever, nothing funny about it, and it's not that's really not my favorite way to use it, but there are some classes that I would rather have more perks or more grenades or something, and the MTAR is a good fit for those. Well guys, that's all for this episode. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope that you learned something useful. If you'd like to check out the previous episode, which was on Peacekeeper Strategies, you can click the box on the left, that'll open in a new window. If you'd like to check out the next episode, where I'm going to be comparing and contrasting Extended Clip versus Fast Mag, you can click that box, that'll open up. I'm going to do some more of those kind of episodes while I build up and get my unlocks ready for the light machine guns. As always, if you enjoyed the content, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.